Hello everyone, how are you? Hope you all are doing very well. And here in this session, we are here with a new lecture on flowchart in C programming language. So basically, if we talk about flowchart, whether it is C programming language, whether it is Python, whether it is any programming language, the concept of flowchart is not changes that much. The flowchart is systematically, diagrammatically representation of sequential steps of a program. So basically, whenever we write any program, the sequential step that we explain with the help of diagrammatically is known as a flowchart. Flowchart uses very, very simple geometrical shapes like rectangles, like parallelograms, right? And each geometrical shape have its own definition and its own purpose. Flowchart in C programming is a graphical representation of any algorithm. So to show any algorithm graphically, we basically choose flowchart. Okay. Now let's discuss about types of flowcharts. So basically there are various kinds of uh, flowcharts. The one is horizontal flowchart, just like this screen. If we explain any algorithm with the help of such horizontal space, it is known as horizontal flowchart. The one is panoramic flowchart. So you know that in your camera, in your mobile phones, there is a panoramic view, right? So to explain any complex algorithm or any complex system with the help of flowchart that consisted so much information, so much data, so much detail, it may be represented using panoramic view. The next one is vertical flowcharts. Most probably for the conferences, for uh, for any any event, for any kind of uh, programming function, we generally represent any any kind of system with the help of a flowchart, which is generally in length. Just uh, if we tilted the horizontal flowchart, it will become vertical in terms of space only. But just to take vertical space, we can do that. And architectural, just to explain complex processes with the help of arrows and with the help of their structures and with the help of different different processes there, we may use architectural flowchart as well. So basically, mainly we can say that horizontal flowchart, panoramic flowchart, vertical flowchart and architectural flowcharts are types of flowcharts. And there is a very simple terminology, flowcharting. Basically, in one line, we can say that the process of drawing a flowchart for an algorithm is known as flowcharting. So the process of constructing the flowchart for any algorithm having a technical term known as flowcharting. So keep this in your mind. Now let's learn about basic symbols used in any flowchart. Basically, if we talk about any symbol, then the first one is terminal symbol. So terminal symbol, you can see that it can be represented like this. We can use this symbol to explain terminal symbol. Basically, this symbol is used for using the keyword like start for end. Like, so whenever we construct any flowchart, the first keyword is start and the last keyword is end. So represent this keyword, we use this terminal symbol. The second one is input output symbol which can be represented like this parallelogram this parallelogram tilted one this tilted rectangle or parallelogram is a symbol for representing any input output symbol let's say in an algorithm we want to take input from any user and later on we need to show the output so we can use this symbol to represent any input or output of any process the next one is processing symbol so processing symbol basically if we take any data from the user and later on it keep going on processing and after some time it may give us the output so to process to show the processing of any in data any document to show basically the processing we may use this rectangle symbol okay the next one is very very important and it is called as decision symbol basically decision symbol is represented with this diamond symbol which is having arrows associated with it. It's simply used for making decision. Let's say if we need comparison that if A is lesser than B, we, we are going to do this. And if A is not lesser than B, we are going to do this. So such kind of decision symbols used to represent 
such statements so i hope the property of decision symbols are clear to everyone the next one is connector symbol so basically connector symbol is used when in flow chart is having a stopping point but it is not ended at some later points on what it is again starting so to make a pause in any flow chart we may use connector symbol the next one one is flow chart flow line symbol so flow line symbols are very very simple and basically to represent the flow of our algorithm the flow of our flow chart the flow of sequential steps that after this step we need to perform that and this and so so we use this flow chart flow line symbols in our flow chart and the next one is documentation symbol and this documentation symbol is used to represent the document let's say in flow chart there is a need to associate some document so we can say that that uh, this is a process and to learn this process in detail you can go this, to this document so this is a document symbol and uh, in any algorithm in any flow chart if we want to uh, give user the identity of uh, internal storage that some some memory is stored here this data is this thing is having some memory associated with it and this is storing some data so to represent internal uh, internal storage we may use this symbol right so they are very very important symbols which are used which are used in any flow chart now let's discuss the basic uh, rules for creating a flow chart the first one is opening statement should start with start keyword it is the basic rule the second important rule is ending statement should be end with end keyword and the next rule is all symbols must be connected by a arrow apart from decision symbol it have its own arrows and on its direction values but each and every symbol which is we are going to use in our uh, flow chart must be connected via an arrow okay now let's discuss about advantages of flow chart so basically there are various advantages of flow chart the first one is communication communication becomes way much easier with the help of flow chart because we know at what level we are performing what function for better documentation 101% flow charts are very very important documentation is proper and for proper documentation better documentation if documentation is good then later part will become very easier easier debugging so if we want to find any errors in the program if you want to find errors in any algorithm at the later part it becomes very easier to debug that at what part we are having error right with the help of flow chart testing becomes so much easier because we may go with the level by level if we are having flow chart in advance then the coding will become easier because we know earlier also that what we need to done here so if goal becomes clear coding will become efficient and for analyzing the complete project complete software very very easily we may use flow chart right so they are some of the important advantages of flow chart now after discussion of uh, advantages let's discuss this advantages of flow chart so basically flow charts are very complex and if some complex algorithm is there it will become a time consuming as well and it is also costly and it makes software processes it makes software processes low it means that software process will execute low or you can say that its speed will become low if we go with the flow chart so there are some disadvantages so we need to work on only on advantages because as earlier level of learning algorithms flow charts are very very important because it gives us the clarity about the program it gives clarity about the goals okay now let's discuss about basic examples of creating a simple flow chart so basically if we want to discuss it we can discuss it like we may use first symbol as a start as you can see on the right hand side part above thereafter we are taking tilted rectangle or you can say that a parallelogram symbol where we are taking user input from user the next part is also input from user two input are taken from user thereafter we are comparing comparing the symbols in decision decision symbol decision symbol if decision will become true we are again in displaying that number because for input and output we may use parallelogram if it is becomes false this will be the result at that time we are using connector it means that flow chart is not stopped but 
later on we are again going to come back here and at the end we may end we may end the calculation the algorithm the flow chart so basically it is a very very simple and basic example of creating a flow chart for adding two numbers by taking you input from any 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 user right so let's discuss all the things in very very detail so i hope whatever i have discussed here in detail about flow charts are very much clear to each and every one so guys do subscribe our youtube channel follow us and please press the bell icon button as well stay tuned with us for more such videos thank you so much have a very nice day jai hind jai bharat and stay connected with us further if you have any doubt or queries do ask we will answer your doubts and queries as early as possible thank you so much jai hind jai bharat